Where winter is slow and quiet, spring is vivid, frantic, and breathtakingly beautiful. It's where it all begins, a season of extraordinary transformation, as the sharp armour of winter melts away into the honeyed haze of summer. Spring is where I'm at my busiest, most inspired and frayed with all the planting and seed sowing, coming in the space of a month. It's a season of late nights under the moon, windowsills covered in seedlings, and spring is poetry, the defining season of the year, both exhausting and glorious. I'd love to say that it starts with the opening of a certain flower or the song of a bird, but for me it's always the change in light that promises the shift into spring. It's a hopeful feeling that's been building for a while, as the first pearl-white snowdrops began to appear in the shivering silver grass. Lulled by warmer days, bees emerge from months of hibernation, clearing out their hive and humming with delight in the sun. Blossom froths in the hedgerows as birds sing loudly among the thorns, establishing their nesting sites by the strength of their song. The short winter grass turns an electric shade of green, skeletal trees thicken with buds, and best of all, it ends with fields full of lambs loudly calling for their mothers as kid goats skip and prance among the flowers. I always seem to be late ordering my seeds, needing the nudge of nature to get me going, but it's such an invigorating moment, pouring over beloved websites, reading up on endless varieties and buying old favourites with a few enticing new additions. I put trays of chilies and tomatoes on the windowsill where the heat of the agar helps them to germinate, and broad beans, peas and onions get planted outside in the damp, dark soil amongst the worms. We use the greenhouse to get a head start on the season, using every inch for tray upon tray of beans, beetroots, turnips, courgettes and pumpkins, where it's still too cold to sow outside. Then begins the magic. A dormant seed awakens, bursting through the soil with leaves unfurling in search of the sun. After the frugal months of winter, the zingy green of spring is an abundant time for us cooks. There is so much joy to be had in the food of spring as we pod baskets of fat sugary peas and broad beans on the garden steps, revel in the cheerful snap of an asparagus, and pucker our lips at the sharp pink of rhubarb swimming in a sea of custard. Every walk, I come home with pockets overflowing with wild garlic and wood sorrel. The weather starts to get warm enough to eat outside, and much of spring is spent with plates on our knees in the garden, munching at sandwiches with muddy fingernails and clutching warm mugs of soup as rain clatters on the roof of the greenhouse. Spring is my most beloved season and I wish it would go on forever, but the buttery warmth of summer beckons when we finally get to rest on our laurels and enjoy the bountiful fruits of our frenzied labour through spring. Well my darlings, that was another lovely reading which I did tweak a little bit <laughs> to make it more appropriate to my feelings on spring. So an adaptation of the start of the spring chapter from Julius Roberts' farm table book, a vlog that I shared in October, I think it was called the October Cozy Vlog, strangely came up on my own YouTube algorithm a couple of days ago and started playing and I started that vlog with the autumn chapter reading from this book and I just thought it was so lovely to really signify so many of the best bits of a new season and I really feel like this week has been the start of spring so I thought I would start today's vlog with another little lovely reading and a few clips um, from that book, so thank you Julius. If you've got that book and you're reading along with me, you might have realised I did tweak, <laughs> I did tweak quite a few bits. Anyway, here we are, it is a gorgeous morning. Look at that, the sun streaming through the windows. I was up bright and early this morning, out um, admiring the blossom in the garden, checking on everything in the greenhouse. It is Saturday today. Some of the clips that you'll have just seen I filmed yesterday. Didn't film too much yesterday, um, but we spent the entire day pretty much in the garden. It was a glorious day. And now, while Charlie's in the gym, I've actually just been filming the try-on clips for the vlog that you'll have seen last time, the Under the Stories bits, and I'm just smitten with this cardigan. I think I said in the last vlog that I wasn't too sure on the colour. I thought it was a little bit dull, um, but actually I love it and I've done the hair bobble trick because the sleeves are just that little bit too big and too long so I've popped a hair bobble up here to keep them hoiked up and it's perfect. So we're going to have breakfast in a second, um, Scarlett is staying with us for the weekend so we're going to have breakfast together 
I made some vanilla ice cream yesterday, so I've got, and you put six egg yolks in the ice cream, so I've got six egg whites that I might turn into a kind of spring onion and cheddar egg white omelette, so I'm going to head downstairs and do that in a second. And then this afternoon I am going to head out and pick some rhubarb to turn that vanilla ice cream into a rhubarb and rose ice cream. So can't wait for that. And we're heading out shortly for a little walk. So it's going to be a really glorious weekend. Um, feeling very spring-like in my outfit of the day so far. I'm going to keep this cardi on. Might change into some leggings for our walk. Oh, there goes the sunshine. Um, but I wanted to share with you some new jewellery that I have just unboxed this morning. I've got half of it on already because, quite frankly, I could not wait <laughs> any longer. It's the new collection from Monica Vinader. Monica Vinader being a jewellery brand that I have adored and worn for, I think, at least 10 years. Many of you that have watched the channel for a long time will know there is a big significance to Monica Vinader for me as well because in the past I have used their bracelets that you can engrave to help me manifest certain career goals. So I won't tell the whole story, but basically some of the bracelets, like these friendship bracelets, you can get them engraved on the underside and I would engrave them with the milestone that I was hoping to achieve. So whether it's 100,000, quarter of a million, half a million, as in YouTube subscribers, and I would set a date in my diary that when I would give myself that bracelet and to the exact date, it worked every single time. <laughs> the magic of the universe. Um, and it's probably the first demi-fine, in fact it is the first demi-fine jewellery brand that I ever wore and bought from. Back in my days working at Reese, I actually used to do mystery shopping <laughs> for Monica Vinader, and you would go and you'd mystery shop and you'd get given a voucher that I would then put towards the jewellery and I just have always adored their pieces. They are so timeless, so such beautiful quality. I wear them all day every day and pretty much everything that I'm wearing right now it's so timeless that it just works across occasions, both more casual outfits for <laughs> a day going out for a countryside walk to more elevated occasions as well. I just could not love their pieces any more than I do and every time they bring out a collection I'm like it can't it can't get any better, it can't get any better and it does. They always manage to lure me in with beautiful new pieces. As I show you some of my new bits, I have got a discount code. It's actually an always on discount code, so if you ever want to treat yourself to anything from Monica Vinader, JosieMV20, the code on the screen here will get you a 20% off discount, which is very exciting. So let me just quickly show you some of the pieces I've been wearing a lot lately. Their bangles, I think, just always look so elegant. I've got a plain one. I've actually got one somewhere in my jewellery box upstairs that's got a diamond in the middle there too, which I love. I thought four would be too much today. And then this one has got diamonds all throughout the top here. It just really catches the light so beautifully. And then this pearl bracelet, it's got the little toggle here. This is a new piece. I will forever be a lover of pearls. They are so timeless and elegant and I think just add such a beautiful femininity to any outfit so I'm always always a huge advocate of pearls and I think that mixing pearls with the slightly more contemporary style of these bracelets works so beautifully and I just I just love the toggle detail I think it's so delicate so pretty excuse the cut on my hand I think I got that from a pair of secretaires a couple of days ago um, but these are also new rings. I did my nails this morning, by the way, myself using the manicurist, um, I think it's called Petal Pink, and then I got from Instagram a little pearly top coat. Quite happy with those, let's see how long they last. Um, but yes, so this one here is just completely plain, but a little bit ridged, which gives it a really nice organic look to it. This one I love for its thickness and flatness, <laughs> it's just a really nice layering piece. This one, I think, is, again, perfect for stacking, perfect for layering. It's got the little diamonds just running throughout. And then this one is like a plain band with that one singular little diamond. So hard to show rings on camera because I don't have very photogenic hands. Um, and then I just wanted to shout out this ring as well if you are thinking of treating yourself because I've been wearing this so much lately. If you don't want to really think about stacking, um, I don't normally wear it on that finger, I normally wear it on the middle but it's got a slightly hammered look to the metal and I just think it's so beautiful. So this would be one of my top ring recommendations. 
The colour that I get is yellow gold. My watch is actually called Rose, but it's only the slightest rosy tint to it, um, so it goes perfectly with yellow gold pieces. And then a couple of bits which are arguably too smart for me for today, but I wanted to show you them. I'll probably end up wearing these tomorrow. We've got a full house full of family for a, not a roast actually, because we want to be a lot more chilled. We don't want Charlie or I to be in the kitchen all day tomorrow, so we're actually doing pies, which is going to be great. But these dangling pearl earrings for an evening look or for really elevating a daytime look and just making it so beautiful. The pearls are fabulous. Um, and they've got a little butterfly clip at the back, so really comfortable. And then this, I just think, I mean, I could definitely wear it today, but as I said, we're about to head out for a dog walk, so a little bit too smart. It is the most beautiful pearl necklace with this gorgeous kind of toggle clasp closure, which actually I like to have at the front because I think it's a really nice design detail. Imagine that this layered up with some chain necklaces in the summer, over a bikini, white linen shirt on, chef's kiss. But actually, I think I will leave it on because it's nice just to like get a little glimpse of it where my cardigan just only shows the briefest glimpse of my necklace. I think that's perfect. The earrings I've got in kind of match my favourite ring. You'll have seen me wearing these a million times before. I call them my quotation mark earrings um, and they have been very popular for Monica Vinader. They really are, again, just so easy to wear, really bold, but not too OTT. They're the kind of earrings you can just wear every single day. So classic. Um, I don't know why my ears are red. It's actually quite warm in here where the sun's coming in. But yes, they're so beautiful. You can wear them. You can wear them a couple of different ways. You can have it like dangling down, or you can almost like tuck it so that they look like a hoop that's going all the way around, but actually it's not going all the way around. I absolutely love them. So those are my new bits. You'll be seeing me wearing them throughout the rest of the vlog um, and beyond <laughs> throughout the rest of eternity. So yes, welcome to a lovely spring weekend vlog. I can't wait to share some yummy things that we're gonna be making. I'm gonna do some hot cross buns tomorrow morning. I'm sure you guys are sick of the sight and smell and taste of hot cross buns by now but I am not, I think they're fabulous, so why not make the most of it? Um, so yes, let's go and make some breakfast. Up. I've got a few layers on but I think I'm gonna to be too warm in all of this. Holland Cooper gilet, Holland Cooper zippy item, then I've got a sports bra and a gym t-shirt on and my barber. It's still early so um, it is a bit chilly outside but I'm, I've got my backpack so I can just unload the layers and fill my rucksack with the layers. Not my most practical of backpacks, it is my Prada one. It's actually the only backpack that I own, but I've got three water bottles and my ankle weights in here. So I am doing a little bit of a, a mini ruck. Um, Scarlett and I were just having a laugh because we're treating this as though we're going to climb Kilimanjaro when actually it's just a three or four hour little little stroll. <laughs> I wouldn't even call it a hike. Um, but we're gonna take the old Defender, maybe even take the roof off because it's so glorious. So we're not gonna take the doggies, Lilla's gonna look after them and spend some time within the garden because it's just too far for little legs. I'm quite happy here, mummy. I'm quite happy sunbathing.
snoot. Which of those three was Charlie? <laughs> that wasn't as good. That's so beautiful. Do, do your best, Winnie. Scuzz? Yeah! <laughs> no, don't think that. Let me try. That was good. <laughs> that was really good. <laughs> oh, this one's a bit slim. Hey, baby. Sorry, oh, Julie. I think they're quite elderly. Are you an we'll elderly horse? Oh, screw for laboon. Very screw. I feel like we've visited a farm. I know. Well, we're having a glorious time. We've had to strip off a few layers, which I didn't really think through very well. So I'm having to carry the barber. Um, but this is such a gorgeous walk. We are we're on this public footpath that goes around all of these fields with beautiful horses in. We're trying to figure out, I think they're quite elderly, my theory is that they are ex race horses. But they're very friendly, they're all coming up to say hello to us. It's the most beautiful land, it's such a beautiful property. Um, the perfect walk, gorgeous! admiring a beautiful big home oak. Scarlett and I are admiring, I don't know if you'll be able to see it from this far away, but there is a sculpture here. It's called Horse at Water and it's quite a famous sculpture and what a fabulous setting it now lives in. There was a larger version that you may have spotted at Marble Arch, but this one now lives here. Such a beautiful setting. such a magical walk we are now just trotting through the little village or hamlet what do we think i think adelstrop's a village adelstrop where the lovely cheese from dalesford is named after and inspired by but look at these beautiful cottages there's a little That's sign on the side of the road here property. no there's a little sign here saying this is the site of the tap which was a source of fresh water for residents living in the lower end of the village until the 1950s we tried to fill up our bottles, but sadly, it's no longer working. But everyone's got really beautiful little flower borders. It's just the cutest little place. Next stop, pub. pub. Fox at Arlington. <laughs> so, we are officially manifesting straw top three in Adelstrop. We've identified the cottages. It's rather gorgeous. That's a good thatch. It's a very good thatch. Adorable, a little thatched post yeah, office. Want? Let's get a snack. <laughs> Are you on an ice cream? Hmm. First ice cream of the year. Um, this yeah, is momentous. It's yeah. Yeah. If anybody watching also just loves to look at beautiful old English houses, then this walk is the one to do. This, I think, is the old rectory at Adelstrop, but it's absolutely stunning. And there's even another house in this little bit of parkland called Adelstrop House. They are quite sensational. This is our three quarters of the way through our walk little treat. We've got rosé, we've got a few teeny weeny little nibbles at the Fox. They just finished serving lunch unfortunately, but some snacks will see us through. it back home after the most gorgeous day it really has been so lovely we were probably walking for about four hours the perfect pit stop three quarters of the way through at the fox and then a quick 
dash around Dalesford to get a few bits and bobs as our final port of call. It was a lovely walk, definitely one that we'll do again and there are so many footpaths around that area and so many beautiful places to explore. It's been the most gorgeous day. It's gonna be a lovely evening and we have got some really nice Italian kind of nibbly bits for dinner. Um, but we're heading out into the garden now. I'm gonna pick some rhubarb. We have got a few stalks of rhubarb that are ready to be picked and I'm going to be making a rhubarb compote because I want to turn my vanilla ice cream, as I mentioned, into a rhubarb and rose, which I think will be delicious. We've had the lawns mowed for the second time this year um, and ooh, it just looks so glorious out here. The herbaceous border is evolving day by day, every day. The salvia is an inch bigger, the lupins are growing, the aquilegis is coming up, the euphorbia is looking amazing. We've noticed so many buds on the wisteria. It won't be long until everything is springing to life. Listen to that bird song, it's magical. Okay, let's go and get some rhubarb. Gosh, it's just gorgeous. Days like today make me so excited for summer and spring. So here is our rhubarb bush. We want to find any stalks which are looking as red as possible, otherwise they'll be a little bit bitter. So let's have a little rummage through. I can see a few nice pink ones in here. It is still quite early, but I'm pretty sure we'll have one or two good ones, especially if you dig around a little bit. Like that looks like a fantastic one. If you just give them a pull and they come away quite easily, that's a sign that they are ready to be enjoyed. It's Easter Sunday today. I've not had a chance to talk to you yet. We've been busy getting everything ready for Charlie's mum and dad to arrive. We're not having a roast today. We're doing pies and mash. So it's a lot more of a chill day. Um, Charlie's lovely mama has bought these beautiful, they're called color lilies. And I'm just gonna put them in a little pot because they're going to look beautiful on the dining table. I already did, as you just saw, a few little bud vases with blooms we've got in the house. So this will be a gorgeous addition to the tablescape.
like I'm dressed as the actual Easter chick today. I've just popped on over my Goelia knit this very old um, Club Monaco fluffy gilet and my Goelia trousers. So we just got back from a lovely walk and I've popped my hot cross buns in the Arga. They're looking quite dark, they're quite kind of like wholemeal looking, but I put lots of spices in them. I always struggle with things rising properly, so I think they might be a bit solid, um, but they've got a lovely glazed marmalade topping. So we're just toasting them, got the fire lit in the drawing room, and we're just having a very relaxing Easter Sunday. dining room and I'm about to lay the table. I thought I would film it for you. It's not going to be anywhere near my grandest, most grand um, tablescape. It's actually a really really chilled day which we love. Unfortunately it's not as sunny as it was yesterday so Charlie's mum and dad are just watching the football in the living room. Scarlett is reading with the dogs by the fire in the dining room, um, drawing room. So it's just a very nice chilled Sunday, which is wonderful. I did put together this morning, I think I showed you a little time lapse, a few of these bud vases. And to be honest, these are just kind of made up from the various displays that we've had in the house over the last week or so. I like to pull out anything that still looks good. Like these are actually little delphinium flowers really really pretty. I did buy a few new stems, just like five or six, including this beautiful raspberry ripple ranunculus. Got that from Dalesford and this little daisy. And then Charlie bought a few bunches from Soho Farmhouse last week, which included some hyacinths. Most of them have gone over, but I've rescued a few. So they're going to go in at the middle of the table. I'm going to use my hellebore tablecloth from Rebecca Oodle. This is the first time I'm going to be using this one. Really nice for spring with the green um, and white pattern. And then I placed about a month ago a Mrs. Alice order. Sometimes they come quickly and sometimes they take forever. This one took six weeks to arrive. I think what they do is they wait until they've got everything in their warehouse. But I always feel like I have to remind them and chase the order and then as soon as I chase them they're like oh everything's finally here um we'll send it to you I don't know just feels a little bit hit and miss but their pieces are kind of worth <laughs> the stress because they're so beautiful so um I'll pop the tablecloth on and then I'll show you the new bits that I bought from Mrs Alice as I add them to the table Okay, tablecloth is on. So I purchased two different options for the placemats. I've just got a little bit of a weakness <laughs> for placemats. These ones are a little bit more um, neutral in colour but fun in pattern with the gorgeous flowers around the edge. And then these ones I feel are very fun for Easter with the pink in them. I've never had placemats with pink in them before. So I think I'm going to go with these today. We're actually only six today teeny weeny family Sunday roast. So let's pop these on. Not a roast, pie and mash. Okay, Charlie and I are big fans of these rechargeable lamps. They are so perfect for tablescaping. We've got so many from Pookie. They were the stars of the show on our wedding table. These are not pookie, these are ones from Mrs. Alice, and you buy the bases and the little lantern heads separately. I just thought that they were such a fun kind of beach house kind of vibe, um, but also lovely for a spring tablescape, the little green bit at the bottom edging, I think looks a bit like moss, very natural. And the pink is just a bit of fun. I've never done much pink in my tablescapes before, but again, I think matched in with the placemats for spring for Easter is perfect. So this won't be going on my table, but I did order this incredibly beautiful Lily of the Valley teapot and tea set also from Mrs. Alice and it's just rather gorgeous. It's very delicate um, but we do like to have pots of mint tea on the go or English breakfast tea 
and I thought why not just have a really fun teapot seeing as they are always out on the kitchen counter for people to just top up their teas as the day goes on. I think we've probably, yeah, we've got a load of <laughs> mint leaves in here at the moment. I'll top it up with some boiling water in a second. I also got the cream jug and the sugar pot to match this. It's not gonna be going on the tablescape, but it was a really exciting part of the order. I did also pick up some pink um, candle holders, these little blown glass ones, and also these rather mega tall ones. They look a little bit like <laughs> something a bit dodgy, um, but yeah, I'm gonna use these to create a little bit of height in the middle of the table. And then I'm going to add my bud vases. I wasn't sure if my campanula was going to come back to life because it was looking a little bit sad this morning, but it's been having a drink and enjoying the sunlight in the dining room window all day. And it has perfectly sprung back to life. We've got the wild anemone and this is an, a delphinium in bud. A real mixture of the little bud vases. And I also got these lovely pink candles. We really are going for the pink theme today for a bit of fun, something a bit different. I always feel like these tables look so much better in real life than they do on camera, um, but it's starting to come together. Obviously our dining room is very dark, so you really have to bring the fun and the brightness with the tables. I will turn the lamps on and obviously light the candles when we're ready to come in. So now I need to decide what plates we're going to use. I'll check with Charlie if he wants to plate up in the kitchen or if we'll plate up in here. But um, now that I've got this far, I'm going to carry on making my delicious mashed potato, which is going to be the star of the show. And uh, we'll continue with this in five minutes or so. So this is the Easter tablescape. I'm absolutely loving the pink. So we've got the lamps in the middle. We've got these sweet little bunny napkin ring holders from the White Company. I love the pink and the green. The flowers look lovely. Yay, very, very happy with this. Again, it looks so much nicer in real life than on camera, which is a shame, but hopefully you can imagine how cute this looks IRL. <laughs> Hello my darlings, it's now Monday morning, bank holiday Monday and I have been a terrible vlogger. I appreciate that I barely, <laughs> I barely spoke to you yesterday while um, we were entertaining on Easter day and today we've been at Bamford since, I've been here since 7am, it's now 1pm but we've had a really gorgeous morning here, double class and then we used our guest passes, had our friends Phil and Hannah come and join us. We did saunering, cold plunging, um, and then a really nice brunch. Then we bumped into Ben and sat with him chatting for uh, a couple of hours. Oh, yeah. Sat chatting with him for a couple of hours. Um, and now finally heading home. Scarlett is at home with the doggies. 
So I'm going to try my best to actually um, film something today because I realised that this Easter weekend vlog has been a little bit scarce on the ground. But not too sure what our plan is this afternoon. I think I've decided that I'm going to do an Instagram outfit reel every day in April because I'm actually really enjoying doing the spring outfits. So I might try to film a few of those. The Instagram algorithm is just a mysterious thing. I've been doing these outfit videos for 12 days. So a new video on Instagram every day for 12 days. And I think that that just makes the Instagram algorithm pay attention to you because even though each of the videos hasn't, like none of them have gone viral or anything, but I've actually gained 6,000 Instagram followers just over the Easter weekend. Whereas prior to doing this everyday outfit thing, I was literally sat on the same number of followers for about six months. So it's finally moving, the needle is finally moving. So I'm just gonna lean into it while I'm actually enjoying creating these videos and do a few more. So yeah. That's the plan, um, so I'll see you when we get home. Okay, my darlings, I'm at home in my dressing room and I finally feel like I can give this vlog my full attention. I always really beat myself up when I feel like I'm not putting my effort into the vlogs. Um, so I, I do apologize that this one has been um, scatty, I'm sure to say the least. So as I mentioned, I do want to film hopefully a couple more outfit videos for Instagram and I also um, still need to try on some of the bits from the And Other Stories and Ralph Lauren orders that I placed because at the time of filming this, the last vlog still hasn't gone live yet, so I still need to film those try on clips. Obviously I'm fresh faced, <laughs> just a tiniest little bit of makeup on from the gym, so I thought I would do a little, not, not all first impressions, but I thought I would try out some new makeup bits with you. I've been using and really enjoying these Aborian um, concealers lately. You know that I'm the world's biggest fan of their BB creme. I use this pretty much every single day. My shade is Doré. It gives you the most amazing skin. It really gives you the most gorgeous glow. It's kind of makeup within skincare. I'm the hugest fan of this. And so when they released concealers and asked me if I'd like to try them, I said, heck yes, <laughs> yes please. So I use the shade Claire under my eyes just as a brightening concealer. And because it's got the skincare benefits within it as well, just like the CC cream, um, it just helps with the very delicate skin under the eyes. I like to use my Beauty Pie sponge to blend this in. So this is a light shade for me, Claire, and as you can see just really nice and brightening. And then I've also got the shade Doré, which is the shade that I wear in the BB cream. And you can kind of use this as a spot concealer, so just in a few places where I've got a little bit of redness. I now keep one of these in my handbag so I don't have to have the full BB cream in there. And it does the job perfectly. It's actually the best consistency formula that I've tried in a concealer in a very long time. So this has swiftly become part of my everyday makeup, especially maybe on those days when you don't want to wear a lot of makeup and just a little bit of concealer will do because I will say that for a BB creme, this has got pretty high coverage. Like even on this concealer, I think you can see the coverage is very good. Really, really happy with that. I need to add a little bit of warmth to my complexion now. And I had a delivery from Dior Beauty and they have released some new powder bronzers from their Forever collection. So let's see what it says. Um, Sun-kissed, tan, natural radiance and perfect. Wow, 90% natural origin ingredients. I'm very impressed with that. So we've got, I guess, a couple of different shades, coral or pink bronze. Ooh, so maybe they're gonna be like a blush bronzer. Oh my goodness. This packaging, this packaging is stunnerillo. It's kind of like a creamy fabric with the gold. Oh my goodness me. That, I would, <laughs> I would buy this just for the packaging. <gasps> 
This is stunning. It's got a little bit of shimmer in that middle section, um, but only the teeniest little bit. I think that coral, that pink, is just going to add the tiniest bit of warmth. Oh my gosh. I love Dior beauty products for the full experience. Like, how fabulous to have something this beautiful in your makeup kit. Obviously, the result on your face is lovely as well, but the actual packaging is just stunning. And I think I am like prime target for Dior Beauty because using Dior Beauty was my gateway into the brand and really how I started developing a love for their branding, for their packaging. And from that love, coined from the beauty products, is what turned me into a customer for the fashion. So I've got three of the book totes now, one handbag and a belt. Um, so not like a crazy, crazy big collection, but would I have been a Dior customer had I not had the introduction to the brand through the beauty products? I don't know. So that is, that's like probably quite a typical customer journey. Look at the color that sport my complexion. Love that. And I do have to say, I love the Dior blushes as well. I am reaching for a Dior blush most days. I've got a couple of beautiful colors. This one was a little bit more autumnal. This one, you can see it's quite well worn. <laughs> um, it's actually nearly reaching a pan. It's the shade 556 Rouge Blush. And it's a really beautiful corally color. Just really, really pretty tones. Would you excuse me two moments because I can hear the thumb mix going off and I'm making a soup, so I just need to go and put my veggie stock in. Okay, I am back. I received a lovely delivery from Look Fantastic over the Easter weekend. It was a really fun Easter, Easter bundle and they popped so many amazing things in there. All of which I'm sure you'll be able to use my discount code on, which we'll leave on the screen. Ico is a brand that I have not used in a very long time actually, but um, this eyeshadow palette looks like it just has the most wearable colours in it. It's called their Limitless Eyeshadow Palette. Very sleek, concrete pink. To be honest, like concretey pinky tones are, ooh! Oh my gosh, this reminds me, aside from maybe these two bottom ones, of that Tom Ford eyeshadow palette from their Soleil range that I just am obsessed with. And this, I'm sure, is a heck of a lot more affordable. This top color is literally the kind of color that I wear as an everyday base on the eyes. And I have been using a lot more kind of pinky tones within my eyeshadows lately. Um, oh, that's lovely. I don't know if you'll be able to see that at all on camera, but that is the perfect just kind of wash of a really soft pinky shade to go over the top. Beautiful. And then this is from a company called Glow Hub, also on Look Fantastic, and it's called their Freeze Please Brow Sculpt Hair Stay three-piece kit. Quite the mouthful. Ooh, this is fun. This feels three-piece or two-piece kit? Oops. This feels like it was designed for TikTokers, so it's got this really fun little pebble item here. I'm guessing this is the brow freeze. Oh my gosh, it looks empty. Ooh, there is actually gel in there. It looks completely empty. So, what is the routine? Do we use the hairbrush first? Lift, tame, and sculpt, keeping every hair in place. Does not come with instructions. Ooh, there's a barcode. I'm just gonna try and figure it out. So I guess we use the spoolie, which is neon, very cool, to dip it into the brow gel. Apply the brow wax onto the brows. Ooh, I like this. It feels a little bit lighter than the bare brow that I normally use. Would you use this to like fluff them? It's like a really bristly toothbrush. Because I do prefer a fluffy brow look to a completely plastered onto my face brow look. Yeah, that's just kind of fluffed them up a little bit. I really like that effect. It doesn't feel quite as harsh as the bare brow. That is most definitely going in my everyday makeup drawer. Very handy little tools as well. I love these little brow kits. Ever since getting my brows laminated, um, 
a week or so ago. I've just felt like I've been having good brow days <laughs> quite regularly, which is great. Limitless Length Mascara from Ico, again via this lovely Look Fantastic delivery. Gosh, that's quite a funky packaging for mascara. Ooh, very satisfying mascara brush. My eyelashes are in that place at the moment where they're almost in protest <laughs> because they so desperately need an LVL appointment. So they're not actually kind of doing anything that I want them to do. Um, so now is not the best time to test out mascara, but <laughs> that seems really lovely, but I, I'm just not like the best person to review mascara. What it's done on this eye has been great. This eye is really temperamental at the moment. We've got a delivery here, again, via Look Fantastic, Nude Stick, Nude Sticks, I've not tried this brand in so long, years, Hydropeptide Lip Butters. These sound gorgeous. Ooh. With Cher and Avocado, I can already tell I'm probably gonna need a lip liner first because I need the definition. So that's just a little bit of Charlotte Tilbury. Is this gonna be colored? Yeah, just the tiniest little bit of color. Ooh, quite a lot of color. That is so much glossier <laughs> than I was expecting, my goodness. That feels quite like 90s pop. I love that lip gloss is coming back. I think it's so much more flattering than um, a matte lip. Mm, it's got peppermint in it too. Instantly softens the lip texture. 2% tripeptide complex to lock in moisture. Mm, this does feel like the kind of lip gloss that would be very annoying on a windy day. <laughs> ah, should have done this first. The Inky List Polyglutamic Acid Dewy Sunscreen. It's only SPF 30, so I wouldn't wear this on a really sunny day or a day that I'm going to be outside a lot. But on days when I'm working from home, mostly indoors, I think this will be wonderful. I'll give that a try. Ah, something else for the lips. Ole Henriksen Pout Preserve Peptide Lip Treatment. That sounds lovely. They just have so many good brands on Look Fantastic. They really do. I can't pop... Ooh, with acai sterols. Lovely. I can't put it on on top of what I'm wearing now, but... I'll try that tomorrow. And then we've got something here. Upgrade your hair tie game from Slip. I use Slip hair bubbles all the time. Or to be honest, the Beauty Pie silk hair bubbles. This is actually wonderful because I've reached a point where I was almost about to go out and buy some more because so many have just gone missing in various cars or handbags. So I've now got four new ones thank you very much slip via look fantastic it does make so much difference to your hair health to use silk hair bubbles i sometimes use the big ones like if i'm just working from home again i feel like these are even more gentle but i have not used a regular hair bubble in like five years since discovering the silk ones they really are the best um i love to do a light a low little bun so my bun technique that nobody asked for that I'll show you anyway. I always just scoop my hair, gather it at the nape of my neck, and then holding it as though I'm gonna do a ponytail with my right hand, and then with my left hand I start to twist and then release, and then twist it clockwise, keep twisting, keep twisting as you go around, and then just kind of loosely tuck those ends in. And then I've already got the hair bubble on my right hand. Grab the hair with the right hand. And then drag the bubble over. That's how I do my everyday bun. And then I'll normally just kind of like pull a few hairs out at the front so I don't look like a mole, which I do. So there we go. A very quick and easy trying out some new makeup products. Really, really happy with my skincare routine at the moment as well and I've been using LED a lot more regularly, so that's definitely helping, especially with the overall lit from within kind of glow. Um, so I do need to do something with my hair, and actually I've got something else new to try out. It is very cute looking from a brand called MDL, ooh, how do we do it? There we go. MDL London, it looks like this, a little bristle brush and it goes at 210 degrees, minimum heat 150. It's not very often that you find things that go down as low as 150. I think certain hair types 
are better with lower temperatures and also I learned recently that if you have extensions or if you wear a wig you have to style them at lower temperatures as well so interesting to know that this goes down to 150 I'll give that a few seconds to heat up okay it has stopped flashing so I'll do what I usually do and split my hair into about a third twist it up on the top two thirds left down at the bottom so this little strap this little button toggle here lets all of the bristles tuck back in so i guess what you can do is very easily un untwizzle your hair if that makes sense so you use it like a hot roller ah yeah of course because sometimes or will it take my hair in with it? Ah! Hmm. Don't know. I'm a bit confused. I have to say it's really lightweight, so to take this on holiday with you will be perfect. So yeah, you can twist your hair around and then release it. Aha! Ooh! This could be the answer to the most perfect little blow dry effect waves. And I've got to say, I love how it looks. This pink colour is beautiful. Ooh, it's hot. <laughs> if you're comparing this to the GHD Rise, the bristles are finer, so it seems like it's catching the hair a bit better. love that that's genius that little toggle if like me your hair just gets knotted into everything that's a bit of a game changer how my hair is now by the way is completely unstyled just washed it at the gym the bottom half of my hair and I'm loving this little bit of movement that it's giving to the ends of my hair. I'm just doing this as like a first impressions, first time trying it out, but so far very impressed. Hopefully it'll hold well. I'm only doing it at 180. Um, could definitely fry my hair a little bit more if I needed it to look fabulous all day, but just loving this little bit of movement. So now I'm going to do the top section as well and I'll show you the finished result. Okay, I have finished styling my hair and I'm in love with these curls. It's just like that almost bouncy blow dry effect. I've just sprayed them with hairspray and then I'll probably use a fine tooth comb shortly. Um, well, I did also just go outside and um, had a little garden walk with Charlie and Lilla in between doing the bottom half of my hair and the top half and then it started raining so the bottom half might be going a little bit flat because it got rained on but never mind topped up the lipstick because I had to wipe it off <laughs> to hold my hair in my mouth which is such a bad habit to be in but um, that's the only way that I know how to curl my hair so let's pop on some of this lovely Kiko lip gloss the weather this Easter weekend has just been absolutely crazy it's just torrential rain now which is a shame because um, I wanted to go out and do some gardening, but never mind. So I hope you enjoyed that nice little um, trying out a few new beauty products. There's a few other goodies in this bag from Space NK, which I'm quite intrigued to try out. What have we got here? Grow Gorgeous Intense Hair Growth Serum. Handy. Uh, Cordially Instant Detox Mask. I need that when I was in the gym this morning. They have really bright lights where you do your um, hair drying afterwards. And I was looking at my chin thinking I really need to <laughs> detoxify my chin area. So I've not actually heard of this mask before. before. Vinergetic C Instant Detox Mask from Caudalie. So I'll be giving that a go when I have a little pamper later. 
Elizabeth Arden also sent the loveliest delivery over the Easter weekend. Um, they've topped up my Advanced Ceramide Daily Youth Restoring Eye Serum Capsules. I haven't used those in a while, um, but I love the ceramide for the face, especially after an LED. So I need to get back into the swing of using the eye serum. And they also sent their Advanced Ceramide Lift and Firm Day Cream, which I'm a huge fan of. This is particularly great if maybe you're using active skincare in the evening and you need something that's just very focused on repair and nourishment during the daytime. Huge, huge fan of that. The consistency is gorgeous. I've also got the Pro Glow Skin Crunching Serum, a gradual tan serum from Espa here that was in the Look Fantastic delivery. I love a face tanning serum. And Espa products are always absolutely gorgeous. So a hydrating facial gradual tan serum for glowing sun-kissed skin. Amazing. Very grateful for a top up of anything on those lines. And then finally, the Ren Daily AHA Tonic serum is it a serum toner i guess yeah i'm sure it's like a toner which is perfect because i just ran out i think i showed you in the last vlog of my elizabeth arden ceramide toner so that will be a nice little one to nibble away at the dead skin cells and help boost the radiance so there we go some lovely new in bits okay so as you might be able to tell behind me this room is a little bit of a mess <laughs> from new pieces got a couple of new dresses here actually from misa london and seeing as i can't go outside because of the rain i will quickly show you those and now the sun is coming out again <laughs> this is literally the craziest day ever so this is the first dress from misa los angeles i could not love this print anymore it makes me excited for drinking rosé on summer patios which i know is really niche but this almost reminds me of a kind of garden trellising um and i love it i feel like it needs earrings i'm going to add the gorgeous monica vinader pearl drop earrings wow i really need to fake tan there's something i just i know that lots of people are like embrace your pale english rose skin but i feel like i just i look more toned and i look more healthy with a tan so um I will be doing that tonight and I will be severely marinating. But um, let's not worry about the paleness. Let's look at these gorgeous drop earrings. The detail is so lovely with the little gold bits in there as well. The little gold charm in between. Really beautiful quality. And this just turns this dress into such an elegant, almost evening outfit with the earrings. Really, really elevates the look. Gosh, I just love pearl earrings so much. And then with the finishing touch, we already know that this bag is gonna be the most worn thing in my wardrobe for the rest of eternity. So gorgeous. Um, I actually received a text from my personal shopper at Netta Porter, which is, I know, the least relatable thing in the entire world. But sometimes if you, do you know what? I'll be totally honest with you, I've had a personal shopper on Netta Porter ever since I bought a load of dresses from them for both myself and my mum from our, for our wedding last year. So I did end up buying Lilla's Oscar de la Renta dress from Netta Porter and as part of that order I must have spent the most money I've ever spent on one shopping order and I think if you spend over a certain amount, this is just my guess by the way, if you spend over a certain amount in one order or in a space of time, you get allocated, you become an EIP, extremely important person, which is so funny, and you get given a personal shopper um, and they will WhatsApp you and like send you emails when certain things come in stock or if they think you'd like a new collection. So my EIP personal shopper sent me a text yesterday with the new Paula's Ibiza X Loewe collaboration. And it's amazing. <laughs> I adore this. And obviously I had treated myself to this for our honeymoon. I'm a Wicca fan, a holic. Um, but Loewe and Paula's Ibiza, they have got some really, really cute bags coming this year, which I'm so excited for. And it's gonna be really hard actually to choose which, because I'm sure I'll invest in one or two of them. Um, yeah, and also trainers and even like little denim shorts with the Loewe logo on the butt. And it's, I'm excited for it to drop, I'm really excited. So yes, I was very enticed by that little preview. Anyway, we're digressing. Gorgeous outfit, 
Um, oh, it comes with a belt around the waist as you can see, but it's very silky, so it did just fling itself undone. I do feel like maybe, maybe a tan leather belt could actually suit this dress a little bit more. We ditch this, pretend that's not there. I think I do actually prefer how that looks. Let me know what you guys think. Obviously I need to get rid of that belt as well. It's got a little bit of a skewiffness to the pattern on the dress, which makes it maybe a little bit more chic. I don't know. So this is style number one, and then I've got a very similar one as style number two. So this is dress number two, obviously very, very similar well, the same pattern, but actually completely different fabric. This fabric is more of a, it's like a georgette, like a really fine silk. I don't think it is silk, but um, it feels like it, like a beautiful georgette, which means it's just got the most beautiful flow and movement to it. It feels perfect for really, really warm summer days, which I just can't even imagine <laughs> just yet, even with the sun shining. Imagine this with a tan. <laughs> I know, it's gonna be really annoying so many of you that um, I'm so desperate for a tan right now but I love it and once again just so perfectly elevated with the earrings with the basket bag it's great for hot days when you just need the sun on your skin can't wait so let me know which one is your favorite it's got a really nice smocking detail at the back here shows that nice little area of back <laughs> if that's your thing yeah really really lovely they always have the most gorgeous pieces on Misa. I will of course leave them linked down below. Okay, I am back in comfy clothes. Now, I realised that literally two weeks ago I said I was going to swap out the clothes here for something a little bit more seasonal, a bit more spring-like, and have I done it yet? No. <laughs> so I'm going to do that right now. I'm just going to take all of this knitwear off. I don't think there's anything here that I don't want to keep. I think it's all stuff that I absolutely love. Um, and I'm going to fold it up and put it away somewhere accessible because I always need to have access <laughs> to knitwear because it is cold. But then I've got lighter knits like this and the lovely and other stories ones that I unboxed with you earlier. Um, so I've got enough knitwear because I'm just really hoping that we are actually in spring now. But this stuff here is all just very, very autumnal. It's like super thick wintry knits that one would hope we're not gonna have to wear now that we are officially in April, fingers crossed. As of today, we are in April. Knits like this, they are lighter, they are spring knit appropriate, but knits like this, especially in the darker color, I think I'm just gonna have to save these until October. Hopefully, I won't need to get them out again until October. So yeah, let's start this switch over. So this is how we're currently looking. Let me actually excuse the mess everywhere. I'm in the middle of a clear out. Turn the lights on. I don't normally turn the lights on in this, but I thought I would um, just to show you how great it looks. Is my camera on the wonk or am I on the wonk? Who knows? Oh, it just looks so much better with spring colored things. It actually, if you ignore the mess around it, looks like a retail space, like a little Club Monaco shopping section. So I have taken out, oh my gosh, I have added to this pile, it wasn't only this stuff that was up there, my mega deep, deepest, darkest winter, like chunky knits, Christmassy knits, things like that. We're in April now, so I think it's safe. <laughs> the sun's back out again, it can't make up its mind. So I've added in some beautiful pastel colours and just some things that I've also just plucked out my wardrobe that I really just almost forget about if they're not there in front of me. For example, this is one of my favourite cashmere knit tops, it's actually from Karen Millen and it's just the lightest, most beautiful pink and it was just like deeply squeezed into a really jam-packed rail full of other stuff, as was this shirt from Reese, which I obviously got last year, and the label is still in it, it's not even been worn, but it's the most beautiful linen, and for summer days, when I'm just need an extra layer on, it's just the loveliest thickness, and like really, I don't know if you can see, but it's a really kind of um, textured weave, it's gorgeous, but the label's still in it, so I obviously put it away, and then when it's in the cupboards, I just don't see things, which is so silly. And equally, 
this Reese uh, cashmere pink hoodie I thought for going to the gym, going to yoga, going to Pilates on warmer mornings but I just need a little something over my shoulders then I thought that would be perfect so love how these things these two little open areas are looking now I need to find some massive storage bags I might actually have to order some on Amazon for my deepest darkest winter knitwear I've been pulling some stuff out of the cupboards that needs to go in the same storage bags I've got a messy pile of coat hangers over here um, I'm starting to put really wintry knit dresses down there and I've also just started, this is where I found the Reese blouse and the other cashmere pink bits. I've just started going through this rail here because there's so much stuff just shoved in there. Um, this is all stuff that I'm actually going to sell. I don't use um, Depop or Vinted, but I do uh, list things on the Reliked website. To be honest, it's just the most convenient for me timing-wise because you actually just get the stuff picked up from your house and then they list it all for you. So for me that's what works best, so I'll leave my reliked page down below. There's some old, um, well not old, still really beautiful condition, lily silk blouses, some Reese pieces, French Connection, even some Zimmerman that I bought many moons ago, and it's just not, not really my colours. So I'm just going to carry on going through this rail, I have no doubt that there are other gems in here that I just don't wear because <laughs> I just can't see stuff because there's too much. I always get this, and it sounds really silly to say, but like anxiety that there are so many gems in my wardrobe that when I first get them and I try them on I absolutely love them and then they just get like shoved inside a rail that's jam-packed like this and I forget about them like look how gorgeous these little tops from Reese are I love them and I found that one from a couple of years ago as well it's turned the other way around but they're just gorgeous little summer tops and they're so shoved in that I just don't see them like this is a really expensive Ralph Lauren blouse and I just don't see it so I don't wear it so maybe something like this could actually oh I love how it looks when the sun's shining and the rails are illuminated let's pop it in here I know it's patterned so it doesn't go quite as well as the other bits yeah I just need to do a little rejig don't want to put too much on these rails don't want them to be too full but I do want to remember to wear things like this. It's not going to go out of fashion anytime soon, but it's nice to have it out in the open. So, there's just little messy piles everywhere, which is very, very annoying, but I'm in a good, ruthless mood, so I'm just going to carry on clearing out this little section. Mm -hmm. 